We're so happy to have Bill Burnett with us tonight. He's going to talk about um, early roads and foundations in Conway, something he's been working on with Sarah Williams a lot. Um, I didn't know other people have been involved for about a year, you said, right? Well, a little bit over, yes. A little bit over a year. Yeah. And, and Bill's a, a, a real Conway native, the way most of us can't claim we are. His family goes way back to the 18th century in Conway. Um, so we're happy to have him here tonight, and thank you. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Like you said, I'm Bill Burnett. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Um, our family settled here in 1781. Um, we've lived in Conway ever since then. And the far we've farmed on the town line, literally on the town line, because the town line runs through the center of the house of the original homestead that we bought in 1781. Um, in addition to operating the farm, I work part-time at Orchard Equipment in it's up here in town, have since 1988. Um, and I was approached by the Historical Commission in the spring of 2016 to s ask if I had any foundations or roads, because this was a project that they had started, and on our property. And I said, sure, I know where there's some. So we made the connections, and what turned into a simple walk in the woods has turned into a <laughs> Uh, yeah, to show a few foundations, it's turned into a passion of preserving a time of the past to move on to the future residents of the town. As a result of this, I discovered there was an opening in the Historical Commission, and I was appointed to a three-year term last July. And one of the greatest satisfactions of this whole project is having my daughter, Caitlin, who's majoring in anthropology at University of New Hampshire, to be involved, to get involved, and be excited about it. <laughs> and so she's been out on many of the walks we've been and really has uh, helped out us a lot. One of the experiences of, recreate, of this was recording, recreating some family history. And I'll get to that later on. Up front here, I've got some items that we've used for our research. I've got the uh, F.W. Beers Atlas from 1871. It's all of Franklin County. And topple maps that we use, uh, compasses, GPS units. The main priority is to track all this information. And over there is a measure wheel that when we get to checking distances from a, from a uh, boundary line or the size of a house, we'll use that to get the accurate dimensions. Uh, this project's not easy. It's not as simple as saying, oh, there's a road out here, or there's a foundation out here. <clears throat> the documentation in research takes time. There's no sense in doing this if you don't have the facts to back up your information. What we record will become part of the history of the town of Conway, and we need to have it correct. So with no further ado, I'll get on to some of the slides that we've done. This is using the topple program and just a uh, topple map of the town of Conway. And you hard, hard to tell that's where everything is. But then we were able to get an overlay of the property lines in town, so now you can see the outline of, of the town. And this is a, a early version 1858 map that we refer back to that shows some of the roads. But the roads didn't last a long time. Some were only 30 or 40 years. So the early roads, 1858, they're not listed. So part of our project has been researching the earlier roads, the layouts, and then recreating them in the woods, walking through and finding them. So this is the location of the Cyrus Rice Foundation. Cyrus was the first settler in the town of Conway, just over the line in Deerfield. He lived there for a few years, not a long time, and then moved about 700 and some odd feet further into Conway at a little better location. <laughs> and this is the road leading up off of 116 in the town of Deerfield uh, of the Coles family that owns the property that the Cyrus Rice Foundation's on. And they were gracious to give us a tour one day and we went up in. And the road forks here, the road to the left goes to the first foundation, and the road to the right 
goes to the second foundation. And this is actually right about on the town line in Conway, within a few feet one way or the other. This is the site of the first foundation. Very hard to determine what it is if you aren't sure. If you're just walking in the woods, you're not going to know this is a foundation. It just looks like a hole in the ground. While we were there, we were talking about wells, and the landowner said they'd never seen a well on this property. So we started digging around, and lo and behold, I found that rock, and what's underneath the rock but the well. So they were, they were pretty excited to be able to have that information. And they were going to build a cover for it so no one would fall into it, which no one has in all these years. But now that we've uncovered it, this is looking up the hill from the first foundation towards the second foundation, where they have put a sign up of when he moved in in 1763. Standing there at the top, looking down, is Ruth Osgood, lives in Plainfield, who's here tonight, and she is a direct descendant of Cyrus Rice. So it was a great experience for her to go to the family's original homestead. And it was a great experience for us to hear the stories. This is part of the foundation of his second house. It's just a pile of stones. Not all four walls are up. You only see parts of them. Moss covered. Okay, this is a <clears throat> copy of the 1871 map. And dot you can see right there is the Burnett homestead right on the town line. We started finding information about the 1766 county road that was built from Hatfield to Ashfield. Before Conway was built, the people in Ashfield wanted a road to get out of the woods that they were living in. So this road was drafted out in 1766. And on the left here is the written version that is really hard to decipher. So Sarah Williams from the Historical Commission has gone through, read this, and typed it out into a, read, a very readable item. This is where we started. And then this is a transcription a little bit. It tells how many rods. Nothing was in feet. Everything's in rods and perches. And so you have to convert all that to the current standards, measures that we know. But Poplar Hill Road, Waitley <coughs> Town Line, and this is Poplar Hill, and Ebenezer Alice House, where Roy Cohen lives now, right on the intersection of Roaring Brook and Poplar Hill. And then it turned and went not where the current Roaring Brook Road is, but a little bit to the north and down into the, into the little um, wet area, little stream down there. And then continues on the, towards Waitley Road, and then cuts up into the woods towards Cricket Hill. And all this information was, had to be discovered. We had to just follow these dimensions and then go out and find this. This is a current 1766 layout that we have found. It's the current location. We've GPS, the blue line is a GPS recording of where we've walked. So it's been uh, quite an experience doing all of this. This is the beginnings of the 1766 road in Ashfield, which is on our property. This is in Ashfield, heading towards the house. You can just see the corner of the shed, which is right on the town line. This is a view taken, I'd say, in about 1928, with a highlighted <clears throat> section of where the road went, right through between the house and the shed, across the field here, there's a stone bridge in here that's still there from 1766, behind the house here, and then off up onto Cricket Hill. Okay, this is past the house at the town line, and right here is the Burnett Family Homestead Cemetery. There's 10 or a dozen grave sites on this cemetery. This is myself, of course. Okay. This is um, the farm that we currently are farming on in addition to the original homestead that we added on to in 1926. 
and it's hard to make out, but you can see like spots right along in here. There's an old foundation there from a house that they tore down. Well, actually, backtrack. They built a new house where the current house is around 1888. After they built the house, they moved all the furniture and everything from one house to the other through the windows, we were told. But however they did it, just passed it from one house to the other and then tore that house down. But in certain times of year when it's real dry, you can make out the stone foundation that's underneath the, the lawn. And from here, the road went up through the woods um, and up to North Poland Road. And this was the old, what we know as the Art Roads property. And on this field that we've hayed for a number of years over the past, and there was one spot when we brought the hay up, it was, all, it was on a side hill. And when we brought the hay up, there was one spot that was fairly level that we could drive up and not tip the load of hay over. And it wasn't in probably three or four months into this project of the 1766 County Road that all of a sudden the light bulb went off and I said, oh, that's the road foundation. And that is exactly what it is. Our research showed the layout and the, foundation, or the road foundation went right through this field. And it crossed at this house right at the corner. We believe that was Emma Beals in the picture. And this picture is probably around 1900. House is no longer there. This was a well on the foundation. It's not a real old well. As you can see, it's been cemented up. It might have been an old one that they, there was cattle on the property, so they might have enlarged it to make more water supply. And then you go up through the woods, kind of southeast of that location. And on the, right on there is a stone wall, and that's the boundary between the trustees of the reservations property and the wildlife management property, the state forest area. This road goes out through to the east. And here, property that I know real well, had no clue there was a foundation there. It's just a hole in the ground. And um, Laura Nichols Shaw that was with us that day, she said, well, what's this? And lo and behold, we found some bricks. It was an old foundation. And this was the Salisbury's foundation. And we went back in the winter with Peter Friesman. He has a connection to the Salisbury's. His grandparents were, or grandfather was a foster child of the Salisbury's, but not in Conway, in New York. And just by chance, Peter ends up in Conway. So there's so many tales in this whole thing just weave right in. This location was the beginnings of the Baptist Church in Conway. The first meetings of Baptist Church were held in this house. What's interesting with this property is there was um, some, how do I want to say, it's non-payment of a debt. And so the land was taken for, for this debt. And the person who ended up taking the land for the debt was none other than John Hancock. 40 acres in 1791. And this property is on the Burnett property. So we didn't own it then. No, we didn't own it then, but land that we do own now. It wasn't our debt. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, there's so many tales in this town that we don't know about that we're finding. Yeah, it was 44 acres. Okay, this is continuing on towards um, Main Poland Road <coughs> in, the, in the wildlife management area. And this is the location of another foundation of Benjamin and Lucius Beals. And it's all grown in, hard to tell. There's part of the foundation right in, in here. But this one is really grown in. And from there, the road is really decent. Goes right up to Main Poland Road. Runs down the current Main Poland Road to the south, to the intersection where Smith Hill goes up to the east to the Conway State Forest. And at that intersection, there's a foundation there, uh, I want to get the name straight, of the Risleys. And they've 
lived there for a number of years. I don't know how many at the moment. So then the road turned, went right up onto Smith Hill. And then at the top of the hill, uh, the layout of the 1766 road said that calls this the height of the land, which is the highest point of this whole road in Conway. And lo and behold, there's a foundation there. And this, we believe, was the Smith family. Now we start down. And it's a fairly steep down. Not, not terrible, but... And at the bottom, there's another foundation. And this is the Crittenden's foundation. And Medad Crittenden. And Mary Boyden Crittenden was his wife. And this whole area of Cricket Hill is, had like uh, seven sons of Crittendons that lived there and had houses scattered all through the whole area. And again, Ruth Osgood is a relation of this family. This is headed towards the Four Corners in the State Forest. And right now this road looks a little bit different than when this picture was taken. We had a tornado in February. And this section, probably 150 feet section of it, is gets flattened with pine trees. This is a swamp out in the center of the state forest by the Four Corners. And actually, it is the Four Corners. Uh, it's called Four Corners because there's four roads that intersect. The road going to the east is underneath this. So it's three quarters, three corners now instead of four. This is leading up to the Maynard Cemetery. And as you can see, the four-wheel drive vehicles have been out in here and have caused a number on the road. <coughs> and this is a Maynard Cemetery, which many of you, I think, have probably been to. This is Malachi Maynard. And his flag on the gravesite is recognizing his service as a Minuteman in the town of Conway. And he was a, one of the two representatives in Conway to the state convention on ratifying the federal constitution in 1788, a year after the Shays Rebellion. And Malachi Maynard used this road to bring produce or uh, supplies to his home. And in the 1918 town history, there's a little excerpt and it says that Malachi Maynard brought from Hatfield in bags 19 shad and two pigs of considerable size. He rested at midnight on the top of Poplar Hill Road, leaning against a tree, fearing that if he set his load down, he not, might not be able to replace it on his back. This is the Malachi Maynard Foundation, which later became the Conway Town Farm. Now we head to the east some more, start down the, the hill a little ways, and we come to what I was saying before, the Samuel Crittenden family with the seven sons. Most of the family stayed here a short while, but moved on to greener pastures in New York State because it was easier to farm. Most of these, these are property lines that we've researched the deeds of and were able to find the, the boundaries of the properties. Most of these were um, Crittenden's in the early days. Now it was mostly Conway State Forest. And this is a memorial that's in New York. I don't know what town, I'm sorry. But uh, a relative of Samuel Crittenden lives in New York and he came to Conway for the 250th and we were able to show him early foundations of their family in the Cricket Hill Walk for the 250th celebration. And he sent us a picture of this memorial. This is the site of the Cricket Hill Schoolhouse. It's on top of the hill by the pond. And the kids would slide down the hill on sleds. I remember reading that in the, in the history also about that. These are part of the signs that were set up for the 
the 250th walk in Cricket Hill. And here we're heading down towards Cricket Hill of, of today. And there's Cricket Hill. And on the right, you can see it is the cemetery. And the road, 1766 road that's abandoned now, continues straight. And like I said before, a lot of the way, that road is very visible after all these years of non-use. Okay, this is a uh, possible foundation site of... Bill, did you, ever, did you find out why they would discontinue those roads or, or make an alternative like right there? Um, I think a lot of it is a lot of the farms left the area. They didn't stay long. And so the road wasn't used, and then they built bigger and better roads that were more accessible. So, so it was a better choice. Yes. But at, at the time, a lot of these roads are on top of hilltops. And we believe they were avoiding the, the rivers. You know, they didn't have bridges to cross the river, so they had to ford the rivers. So they stayed on high ground, and, which was easier in some senses, but <coughs> in others, it, it made it harder. Okay, this was um, the Mantor family, and Daniel Mantor was a surveyor that surveyed a lot of the properties in this section of town, and he died at a, a young age. This is just below the uh, Cricket Hill Cemetery on the current Cricket Hill Road, right on that road that went straight. It's right there. And then this is uh, uh, headed towards the Waitley Road, crossing the um, little small stream. And here we approach the Waitley Road, and this is Bob Nowak, the northern end of his property line. And then the road took a sharp right, left turn to the east, right along in here, right across the stream, the Willays north of the Roarnbrook Road, existing Roarnbrook Road now. And it dropped down into this area, it's just a swampy area. But we found it was the road because there's a stone bridge, which was referenced in the layout. But it was pretty well grown in. If you weren't looking, you probably wouldn't find it. This is a picture of the Ebenezer Alice home. I'm not sure the date of it, but it was um, where Roy Cohen now lives. And the road went. I forgot the distance away from this house, like 17 feet or something away from this house. And this is a current picture of that house, right at the end of Poplar Hill Road. And here the road turns, goes up the hill, and there's your views looking off to the east. So you can see why these people like to live up in here, because there's great views, dry land. This is continuing down south along Poplar Hill Road towards the Waitley Town Line. And again, Bob Nowak and Jane Recor and myself. And this is property that Jane's family owned and farmed. And she was taking us to a foundation near the uh, Waitley Town Line. And here again is another layout of uh, mapping that we have done using the deeds to locate the boundary lines of the properties. And this is the foundation of the Eames Foundation, I think it is. But backtrack a little bit. At the bottom of here is a little strip of land that's called the Gore. And what it was was disputed land between Hatfield and Conway. And so the original boundary this was the original prop proprietor, original proprietor's lot right here, and it ended right here. In 1783, this land was settled and Conway grew down to this line here. And this gore ran a great section along the southern boundary of Conway. And in the foundation, this is one of the things we look for, whether it's a house or a barn. Um, we found bricks at this location. So it was quite likely a house. And here, we believe, was probably a, a root cellar. 
Bob's looking in one end, I was looking in the other. And it was just a big empty void in there. And then this is another picture of my family. Kind of has a connection to this whole story. This would be Willis Burnett. This is my grandfather, my grandma, grand, grandmother and grandfather, um, Frank and Ruby, and my father, Donald. <laughs> this would be Ruby, my grandmother's mother and father, and my grandmother's grandmother and grandfather. So um, the Sandersons and Bargos from Waitley. And then that's a picture of my daughter, Caitlin. And what's really kind of interesting here, I said I'd tell you, come back to the recreating the, con uh, the history of the farm, of the family. My grandparents, Frank and Ruby, were married in 1919. My grandmother grew up in West Waitley, and you guessed it, on Poplar Hill Road. <laughs> After discovering the layout of the 1766 road, I realized my grandfather traveled this road a lot. <laughs> maybe on foot, maybe on horse. This summer, my daughter, Caitlin, and I set out to recreate the steps of my grandfather. We started at the farm on the Ashford Conway Town Line and walked to the Waitley Town Line. In some places, the road had grown in, was hard to see. In some places, you are crawling over trees taken down by the tornado in February. But most of the way, the road is very easy to follow. The total distance was 7.92 miles, according to the GPS unit, and took us about three to three and a half hours. It was like stepping back into time it was such a rewarding moment to be able to share this with my daughter. That pretty much concludes this. I want to thank the Massachusetts Cultural Council and the Conway Cultural Council to providing funds to buy the mapping program that we're using to get all this information together. I want to thank the Conway Historical Society for letting us use the building to put the presentation on. I want to thank the Conway Historical Commission for support, especially Chair Sarah Williams, who was out this, it would not have happened. The hours of research that goes into this is amazing. Also, the people who have come out and helped us put feet on the ground are Peter Friesman, Ulia Stone, Laura Nichols Shaw, Jane Recor, Bob Nowak, Caitlin Burnett, and Sarah Williams. And if I've forgotten anyone else, I apologize. I want to thank all the landowners that we've trod on their land with. <laughs> all the information they've given us. Without it, we wouldn't be where we are today. And many thanks for everyone's patience. We will get it done. It may take some time, but we will get it done. And if you have any foundations on your property, please feel free to come to us and let us know. I've got some information or uh, contact cards up here if, if anybody wants them. Thank you so much, Bill. That's really oh, you're welcome.